And so when we are touching on that subject of bad financial advice that sounded good, the person selling you the annuity might say to you, hey, you can invest this money and we guarantee that you're going to get 4% over, you know, annualized over the next 15 years. Right. And it might sound good at the time, but what is one of the, the gotchas that might be involved in that contract? So in this case, it sounds a lot like a fixed annuity, mm-hmm. meaning it's going to walk and talk like a CD. Mm-hmm. Here's the problem is if this is not in a retirement plan environment, so some kind of tax deferred environment, that 4% is going to be a pre-tax return. Mm -hmm. And then if you ever want to take the money out, it's going to end up affected by your tax rate because that tax deferral in an insurance product is only going to protect you while you're in an insurance product. If you ever take a distribution out, it's going to be taxed as ordinary income. Keep in mind, ordinary income tax rates are typically higher than long-term capital gains tax rates. Okay, So what you're doing is you're taking something and putting it into a tax wrapper and changing the type of tax it's exposed to. Mm -hmm. Okay, And they often have internal operating costs. Now, fixed annuities are much more predictable. Yes, they have operating costs, but they also have a stated rate of return. But you have to understand that that's a gross rate of return, typically not a net after tax return. One of the things that... um would kind of spook me um, in this situation would be, what if I want my money, right? Oftentimes with an annuity contract, if you want your money early before the stated date, you're going to have to pay something called a surrender fee. Right. Where, okay, I put $100,000 in and I planned on having it invested for 15 years, but something happened in my life and now I want that money out. It's been three years and I have to pay, you know, a six, 7% penalty exactly. to pull the money out. And it's it could be six, seven percent. It could be very, very expensive. Right. So now I'm out, you know, seven thousand dollars. Yeah. I often call this golden handcuffs. That's right? a beautiful you're, example. You're putting right? on a pair of golden handcuffs. And the other thing is once you get into an insurance product, then in order to get the money back out of the insurance product, if it's not in another tax deferral wrapper, mm-hmm. meaning it's not in like a retirement plan, then that transition back out is a taxable event. So you got dinged twice. Well, you, you don't get dinged twice. Well, That's a, the, uh, this is an important concept for our listeners, right? The IRS doesn't make you pay tax twice. No, what they but do between is between the penalty and the tax, now you're getting dinged twice. Well, you're getting dinged in that respect, but yeah. I guess I'm thinking you're not getting taxed twice. No. Right? You paid taxes on the money. If it's after tax money, right? You paid taxes on it already, but the growth hasn't been taxed yet. Mm -hmm. So when the growth comes out, then you have to pay the taxes. They get you on the way in or they get you on the way out Mm tax-wise. But the insurance carrier can charge penalties if you leave early. So that's that golden handcuff clause there. So I think annuities... Uh, they're, they're not wholesale evil. There are people out there that have annuities that sell them with income guarantees or other features to them. Again, I'm going to refer back to the idea that if one really breaks apart the expenses, right, what you're paying for in that circumstance, in my opinion, is the ability to say a third party is going to carry the risk of the investments now. Mm-hmm. Okay, So you're saying, I don't want to be responsible for managing my own risks. I will pay somebody else to do it, and I'm in an acceptable cost. Right. But I think what people are oftentimes, they misunderstand is the design of those products is designed to limit the risk of the insurance company as well. Yeah. And so it's much harder to achieve high rates of return because imagine an insurance company saying, well, we're going to guarantee you a bunch of money, but we're also going to let you have all the upside in the contract. But if the contract's upside down, we have risk exposure. Mm -hmm. Meaning if the contract falls in value because the stock market goes down and your mutual funds drop, and we have to guarantee that we can keep paying you an income, Mm -hmm. they have a lot of risk exposure. So they have to be very careful about how they charge for these guarantees. And so uh, my experience, and I've been tracking these for over 10 years, different types of contracts. uh, and, And I say that cautiously, meaning I've seen these for over, I don't, I can't tell you, like I watched this last contract for 10 years. I've just seen many developments and iterations of these types of contracts over the last 10, 15 years. There's a reason that their buildings are really big, right? Like, well, it's just insurance is very predictable about mm-hmm. th- they're, they're using their actuarial processes in order to make sure that they are 
going to end up winning more than they lose. Well, to make sure that they're just not going to lose, right? Yeah. That's by design. And insurance companies are they're very savvy about this. So they're not going to create a product that guarantees you unlimited upside and no downside. Mm-hmm. They are going to create a product that's going to keep you within the guardrails. And they're going to make a little bit of money on top. Right. And so, yeah. yeah, that to me is, it sounded good at the time. And then afterwards, I can't tell you how many customers that we've had that have come to us where they, they had a product like this and we've had to look at it. And then we've seen, oh, you've owned this seven, eight years. And the actual internal rate of return was very negligible. Right. And it became a, a frustration of, well, why did I get this thing? And it's, well, it sounded good at the time. You know, in just full truth and transparency, I mean, yeah, I've been doing this a little over two years now. I've never had someone walk through the door and be happy with their annuity contract. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that I, may I, have to do with the, the business that we are in. Sure. And right? I don't see it all the time, right? Yeah. And there's not been a huge volume of them, but anyone that I've seen that has one has frankly been disappointed. I will still say they, they have very specific roles. You know, right? if you, they could play, you know, an important no, they role. Absolutely for- play. 